Thunderstorms are one of the big hazards. There are three conditions which are necessary for the formation of a thunderstorm. The first is moisture or high humidity. Next, some kind of lifting action is needed. This could be the passage of a cold front pushing warm air upwards, or it could be thermals of warm air from the surface convecting upwards. Lastly, the air must be unstable. This means that as warm air rises, the temperature of the air around it drops so rapidly that it will continue to rise indefinitely. When the air is said to be unstable, its lapse rate is higher than normal. The temperature drop of the thermal is slower than the temperature drop of the larger atmosphere, so the air keeps rising and rising. The vertical development of thunderclouds, called cumulonimbus clouds, can be very extensive. The first stage of a thunderstorm life cycle is called the cumulus stage, where strong updrafts from that lifting action carry moist air into the atmosphere. The risen air condenses and large water droplets form. When these droplets become heavy enough that the updrafts no longer hold them up, they fall as precipitation. This is the beginning of the mature stage of the thunderstorm, characterized as having both updrafts and downdrafts and seeing the beginning of precipitation. The final stage is the dissipating stage, where the remaining moisture falls out of the cloud and only downdrafts are present. These downdrafts that bring rain also bring cold air very rapidly towards the surface. As this air impacts the ground, it spreads out, creating a vortex of air called a microburst. These microbursts typically occur in advance of the line of showers from the storm. The most severe thunderstorms are associated with strong cold fronts, which bring a squall line of storms in advance of frontal passage. This radar image shows a line of storms being carried by a cold front stretching across the southern U.S. Fog is another hazard to aviation because its layers are thin and widespread, making it easy to see directly down through them, but not as easy to see when looking across it on final approach. Advection fog is most likely to occur from an air mass moving inland from the coast and cooling. This is the famous San Francisco fog that flows in from the Pacific. It depends on wind to form. Just like upslope fog does, which is fog formed by the upwards flow of air over a mountain ridge. Radiation fog is common when the ground cools after sunset and warm, moist air condenses close to the surface. Icing can occur when flying through visible moisture, such as clouds or fog, when the outside air is below freezing. Flying through clouds can produce ice even when the surface temperatures are warm because temperatures aloft can cool down to below freezing. There's typically a freezing level where temperatures are expected to be below freezing. Icing can be picked up outside of clouds in certain types of precipitation. Typically, if precipitation falls from clouds below freezing, it falls as snow. As long as the snow falls through air that remains below freezing, it'll reach the ground as snow. If there's a layer of warm air, however, it'll melt into rain or sleet. If a temperature inversion exists, it'll partially melt but then refreeze as it continues to fall, forming freezing rain. This is an extreme hazard to aircraft as the structural icing resulting from freezing rain can quickly degrade flight performance. Turbulence is the result of different air masses clashing together and forming wakes in the air. The presence of mountain peaks and ridges can produce its own type of turbulence called mountain wave. Air flowing across ridges is forced downwards and the pressure drop forms an almond or lens-shaped cloud called a lenticular cloud, which appears stationary but can contain winds of 50 knots or more. Rotor clouds can also form lower down the ridge and contain heavy turbulence as well.